to free us from bondage to sin, Satan, death, hell, and the grave. That who? That whosoever believeth in him. That's it. That's why we're searching for faith. Whosoever believeth in Jesus shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But he who believes is not condemned. But he who believes not is condemned already. Not that he does not believe in order to be condemned. He has to believe to get uncondemned. Or to keep. Wow. That almost seems like an oxymoron, doesn't it? He who, uh, he who believes is not condemned. But he who believed not is condemned already. Why are you condemned already? You're condemned already because you have not believed. Praise the Lord. I got about 15 minutes left and I got some more visuals to cover. And I got uh, a couple other things that I want to want to tell you about. You know who Jesus is? That's what I want to ask. Do you know who he is, what he's done, and, 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 why you, and why we need him? And some of the things that you should believe. One thing that I do know that you have to believe in order to be a born again believer, a follower of Jesus Christ. If you believe in a spirit world, If you believe in a spirit world, you must accept the biblical view of the Trinitarian doctrine of Jesus Christ. You must accept the fact that Jesus Christ is equal with God the Father. Same essence, same substance. You must accept the fact that Jesus is also equal to the Holy Spirit. Now, I, 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 I find it hard to believe that I'm explaining this. Uh, let's see. 325. That's 1600 and some years. Almost 1700 years later. After it was first pointed out. And that Jesus and God were of the same substance. And then it's at 381 A.D. That would still put it almost, almost 1,600 years. A little bit, almost 1,600 years since uh, the Holy Spirit was, was uh, proclaimed to be of the same essence and the same su substance as God the Father. And for... Oh, I guess almost 1,800, almost 15, 1,600 years, the, the majority of the church believed that. But then there arose some false prophets and false teachers, and they, as it is written, and they kind of changing that around now. You can, you can shave them off. You can discard the Holy Spirit. You can discard Jesus as being divine. You can treat him just as a man. You can make him an angel, but you can't make him God. That's, that's, that's the trend now. Uh, called abandoning the faith. Now, it's all in here what we're going to do. So when I see it happening, I just find the passage of Scripture says, Oh, there it is. Hmm. There'll come a time when people will kill you and think that they're doing God a favor. Hmm. There'll come a time when they won't even pray to the sun. 
They'll lead the son out of the prayer to the father. True. But if you believe in spiritual unity, born again, believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, you are bound by a Trinitarian doctrine. If you're not bound by a Trinitarian doctrine, doctrine, you're none of his. You may call yourself Christian, but you're none of his. In the uh, time that I have left, I'm going to do some comparison and contrast of a few passages of Scripture. Uh, to show you how you arrive at faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and the word of God from preachers. I know we're, we're all in the priesthood. Thank you. I know we're all in the priesthood priesthood of believers but all of us don't have the same titles and the same functions in the priesthood. So if you are if you haven't been called by God to be a preacher you are Basically, an observer of his word. Like the Bereans. The Apostle Paul preached to them what the word said, and then they looked in the Bible to see if it was there. So, everybody can read the Bible to see if it's there. But where's the insight, the discernment? the understanding, and the comprehension. Even the apostle, apostles didn't fully comprehend some of the things that Jesus had told them until it was proven by the prophecy coming true. So let me, let me see what some, of the, what some of the scriptures we can correlate to. Uh, let's see. Let's correlate Romans 5, 8 to 11 with John 3, 18. Romans 5, 8 to 11 is the plan of salvation that was revealed in the New Testament. And 3, 18 is the consequences. John 3, 18 is the consequences of not accepting the plan. God commended his love, demonstrated his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh -huh. That takes it out of our hand. If while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, then he provided the remedy before he offered the gift. Well, let's correlate the... Uh, the relationship between the death of Christ in John 1930 where he say it is finished well what was finished and John 16 7 to uh, 7 to 12 why it was necessary for Jesus to send back to heaven he finished Whatever Jesus had come to the earth to do, he said it was finished in John uh, 1930. But earlier, he had said in John 16, 7 to 12, that it was necessary for him to go back to heaven. But he couldn't go back to heaven until after he died, been buried, and resurrected. Then he could go back. All right. 
Well, this program is almost coming to a close. I'm going to do one more, and then I'll go into a, a short summary and close. What's the meaning of Romans 11.22? where God deals with mankind in either one of two ways. His goodness, which is above his love, mercy, and his grace. Above his love, mercy, and grace is his goodness where he rules supreme and his severity. You will die in your sin unless you believe that Jesus is who he say he is. He's done what he said he's done. And you need to believe him because of what he has said. And once you do that, you enter into a, a, new, a new era of conscious existence where you become the ward. Uh -huh. You become the responsibility of God. Once you meet his criterion of faith in his son, you become the responsibility of God to get you to heaven because you're dealing in the spirit realm over which we have no control or power. Because mm -hmm. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit would be with us, on us, and in us. I can be guided by a holy, divine, intelligent spirit, or I can resist him. Well, for this segment, we're going to close. Do you know who Jesus is? He's the one that came and died for your sins that you might have eternal life with your creator and while you are in this body to live a life that is pleasing to him. And the New Testament tells you how to do it. The Old Testament gives you the examples and the encouragement, the admonishment. Uh, don't do it that way. Do it this way. You see what happens when you do it that way. God is good. His mercy endures forever. For those who love him, who have been called through the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ in faith, all who are called through the hearing of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, hear it in faith and acted upon by his Holy Spirit. There is your Trinitar Trinitarian gospel of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.